Cool. All right. Well, I am John Reiney. Uh, I am technical evangelist for a company called Pocket Doc. If you're not familiar with the term technical evangelist, that basically means I'm the nerd that they let out of the cave every now and again to come talk to other nerds and tell them why they should use our stuff. And so here I am. I've got bright lights, I've got a mic taped to my face. This is really cool, it's awesome. How about a hand for Findeavor? This has been really cool so far, right? Yeah. Anybody? Come on. There you go, all right, cool. So what's Pocket Doc? Well, we like to call ourselves the operating system for the business of health. We make it easier to get access to the, law, the core transactions that are necessary in the healthcare business. And a not unreasonable question to ask would be, if you're a healthcare company, then what are you doing here, right? This is Finn, right? Well, I haven't forgotten that this is a, this is a finance show, so let's start with some numbers. Three numbers, not a whole spreadsheet of numbers. People have been showing off, I've seen, Total side note, but I have seen more Excel worksheets in the last two days than I have seen in a year. It's, it's incredible. So there's an entire Tumblr dedicated called spreadsheethell.tumblr.com where I stole this image. It's really funny. So numbers. First number. First number is number one. Everybody likes to be number one. We don't like to be, oop, one more. We don't like to be this number one. Medical bills are the number one cause of personal bankruptcy in the United States. Yay, number one. Mm. There's another number, $12,900. That's pretty close to what I paid for my car a couple of years ago. It's also what the average family can expect to pay if they're on a high deductible insurance plan, which are growing every year, year over year. This is what they can expect to pay out of pocket before their insurance pays anything. This is not an easy number for a lot of families. Here's a number. A lot of folks in this room might go, hey, that's almost real money. Awesome. $42.8 billion. This is the newest number I could get from 2014. That is the amount of revenue that hospital systems had to write off because they couldn't collect it. Either they tried to collect it and they couldn't, or they just never tried because they knew there was no way they were going to get it. What's referred to in the industry as charity care. That's money. Finance has always cared about health. Health has tremendous capital expenditure that finance finances, but they're starting to care more. A lot of people say that a lot of those numbers are related to the fact that healthcare has changed. They talk about the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. It's not really true. That's been happening for a long time. It's been happening well before the ACA. Insurance payers have been increasingly shifting increasing costs as people get older, people live longer. They've been shifting those costs to the consumer. Oftentimes the consumer is not able to shoulder that load. but. I don't know, I don't really think that's a, a good way of expressing it either. The, the way I put it is, healthcare is a giant dumpster fire in this country right now. It's really that bad, it, it's terrible. Like we've, we've moved the dumpsters around and we've maybe made a ramp that makes it a little easier to jump in the dumpster, but it's still on fire. This is, this is really difficult. As a side note, I love when like Canadian or British or Australian companies come by and it's like, what are you having problems with? Why is healthcare so hard? Okay, it's bad here, it's really bad. So, we're trying to do something about that, and that's why I'm talking here. And this will make sense as to why I'm here at a finance conference. Three points. If you can let people know what they might be expecting to pay, instead of seeing them and then sending them a bill three, six, 12 months down the road, you can actually reduce a tremendous amount of risk on the front end. You can only really do that, though, if you improve and commoditize a lot of the core transactions that make healthcare work. We'll talk about that. And if you do that, if you do enough of these transactions, you can get a lot of data. Big data is the big buzzword nowadays. If you analyze that, you can put together very interesting data products that are actually useful outside of health. That's why we're here. They can inform lending decisions, and this is really cool. So, ease of use. <clears throat> Pocket Doc started as a consumer play. Our founder, Lisa Mackey, who couldn't be here uh, today, she's off doing CEO stuff. She had an injury. Uh, she was snowboarding? She was a snowboarding instructor, that's what she was doing. Um, she needed 
something done, she needed a procedure, she went to her doctor. She wasn't happy with the options that her doctor provided. She went to the internet and searched around, and if you've ever tried to search, well, it's getting better, but years ago, if you search the internet for health procedures, you basically find out that you're going to die. And, you know, maybe you'll get some useful information other than that. And she said, why can't I shop for this? Why isn't there Amazon? Why can't I comparison shop for my options? Why can't I find out what I can expect to pay? So we built that. We built a marketplace, a beautiful e-commerce style marketplace for health, for cash and insurance prices, where you could look for the care that you needed, find the providers where you could get it, and figure out how to pay for it. In fact, you could even pay for it directly on the site if the provider accepted cash. So we set out to do this. This is what PocketDuck started on about four years ago. But to do that, we needed access to a lot of stuff. We needed data. We needed connectivity to systems. And we went out, you know, we're web developers. We're thinking, all right, yeah, we need to talk to insurance companies. There's got to be an API for that. We've got to talk to a hospital system. Surely there must be APIs for those. That's a giant industry. They didn't exist. We ran into the same roadblocks that a lot of startups did. There was a, a huge blossoming of health tech startups after the ACA came out. They couldn't get the data that they needed and they died. It was a Crunchbase article that came out a little bit about that. The difficulty in integrating the legacy systems. We're talking about the core transactions of health, not the core starring Hillary Swank. Terrible movie. It's a bad joke. Anyway. We're talking about the insurance companies, the payers. They're called the payers because they pay. If you pay, you're kind of at the center. We like to think of doctors at the center, but at the transactional core of it, you got to deal with the insurance companies. We're talking basic stuff. Do I have coverage? What is my deductible? What are my co-pays? What drugs can I get? What are my limitations? Afterwards, you know, I go get some care. Somebody's got to file a claim. That's got to get to the insurance company somehow. I want to find out how that claim went. Maybe even before that, I need to enroll. Maybe my doctor refers me to a specialist. So all these things, by and large, are done electronically. Good. The federal government mandates that they're all done via standard. Good. The standard is something called ASC, Accredited Standards Committee, X-12-5010. Not so good. This is asking an insurance company for your deductible. If you can read that, pocketdoc.com slash careers. <laughs> the spec for this one request, and you have to pay for it, it's several thousand dollars. The spec is 552 pages for this one transmission. Not the answer you get back, just the question. We made it into that. We implemented that spec, we connected to, we just passed our 400th insurance company that we're connected to, we're at over 90% of covered lives in the US, and you can send us a web service request that looks like that, and says, uh, hey, I wanna see if I can go get a chiropractic visit. The response looks like that, it's even worse. Our response looks like that. It's actually pretty long. There's a ton of stuff that comes back. Almost more demographic information than Facebook has about you, interestingly enough. Think about what you could do with that with just the member ID that's on a card. But, you know, my co-payment is 10 US dollars. You can read that, right? So why is it so bad? This committee started in 1979. It's kind of hard if you weren't, you haven't been in the industry and, you know, professional IT stuff for a while to kind of know what servers and IT infrastructure was like in 1979. This was one of the best personal computers in 1979. This is my Apple II Plus. I restore these things for fun. If you try really hard, you can put one Instagram picture on both sides of a floppy disk. And hands up if you know what a floppy disk is. So. Obviously, you know, we came to this like any other developer. APIs are better than quote unquote standards that everybody implements wrong anyway. Not having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars of startup and maintenance fees and paying for documentation and ridiculous stuff like that, you know, not having that is good. So we lower, lower the barriers. We let organizations from individual garage startups to organizations like Xerox, Doctor on Demand, Healthiest You, process the transactions that they need in the business of health. Well, what are we gonna do with all that, right? We're processing all these. Most companies only process one type or another. They're stuck in silos. They're just doing enrollment. They're just doing claims. You can slice that demographically, geographically, maybe, but you can't really make a lot of deep inferences about a single column. We have a bunch of data scientists. We have a very strong mathematical background, and to quote, Somebody with a PhD in something I can barely pronounce, nom, 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 more data. <laughs> data scientists really like data. So they can make things like this. 
This is throwing, pretty sure this is our provider network, into a uh, graph database. This is much lower resolution. If this were printed out, it would be the size of this stage. You can make pretty amazing analyses about this. Think about Facebook, right? Facebook, they don't care about the cat pictures that I post, because I post a lot. They don't care about the jokes that you post on your wall. But what they conclusively proved is if you take everybody's interests, everybody's locations, what everybody's into and doing and talking about, put it all in a graph and march across it in a bunch of interesting ways, you can redesign marketing. That's pretty cool. We think we can do the same thing with health. We think we can do that for more things than just health, right? Like finance. Hey, endeavor. That's why we're here. Nice. So what can we do? You remember that number one that wasn't so number one? That's bad. Finance companies, by and large, they're holding these credit card accounts. They're kind of on the hook for the other side of it, too, when the health systems can't recoup their bucks. They really care about this stuff now. That's why we came up with this thing called health credit outcome. A lot of financial institutions are thinking very hard. I wish I could tell you who they were, but we're in initial pilots right now, so we can't. But they're thinking very hard about, OK, why don't we nip this in the bud? Why don't, just like you go to the bank usually before you buy a car to talk about financing options just to see, why not go to your bank before you get a major medical procedure? Right? You want to get your eyes fixed. You want to get your hip replaced, something like that. Why not go to the bank first? And they can say, you know what? Instead of you going through your insurance, filing a claim, maybe something goes horribly wrong, and maybe you get stuck with a giant bill that you may or may not be able to handle six to 12 months in the future, we can extend you a line of credit. We can give you a loan. We can put together some sort of financial instrument to help you pay for this. But do you just go and get a credit score? Like, how do you, how do you rate this? Credit scores are great. The FICO people are right across the, the way from, from our little table in the hallway. That's an awesome score. But it's looking at someone's propensity to pay, by and large, in a global scope. Some people are really good at maintaining their health lifestyles and not so good at their financial lifestyles. They suck at paying their bills, but they're really good at following up on physical therapy, taking their drugs, doing follow-up visits. So we want to create a rating system that works in a health context, informed with health data, taking with the patient's permission, combining health data into a product that can be used to offer a financial instrument. This is kind of the shiny brochure where of how this works from our website. There's mo more details on, on pocketdoc.com. But essentially, the patient's consent. All this data comes in. What claims? What doctors have you been searching for? What doctors have you been going to? What medications have you been taking? Have you been taking them? Have you been doing follow-up visits? All of these things. All these things that, frankly, a lot of companies have been using against you in the past. Insurance companies have said, oh, you, you have this. We're certainly not going to pay for that. Why not let your data work for you? Right? So that's what we're trying to do. I really want to demo this stuff to you, but uh, one, it's really early. We're showing it to a bunch of early stage people, again, that we can't talk about. We're still working out exactly how this is sort of shaped and, and how it feels. So this currently isn't part of our public API set. We're very different from a lot of folks in the health space in that we have a public API set and documentation and code and samples and a GitHub repo and all that other happy stuff. But we'd love to talk to you about it. Love to get you in touch with the folks that are working on this. This is not the only thing that we're working on for the finance industry, but this is kind of a start. It's pretty interesting that you're actually enabling people to take the health data that belongs to them and use it for their own benefit. It's kind of an amazing idea, right? That's what we're trying to do. So our website, pocketdoc.com, has all the shiny brochure type pictures, some of those that I was showing you. Platform.pocketdoc.com is our developer site. We're about to do a pretty significant revamp on this. More, better, shinier, faster stuff. Take a look at the slide deck if you, you know, really want that, uh, that weird picture of me with the Apple II. And uh, I tweet uh, at Riney, health stuff, not health stuff, and uh, lots of cat pictures. So uh, that's my time. Thank you so much for listening.